Tactical Tuesday is back for another discussion on the BT-10 meta. And with much of the format being similar to the hybrid meta, it's time to discuss Tamer Hate. Hence the title of today's video, Hate the Children, Save the Children. The BT-10 meta is going to have a strong resemblance to the BT-7 and BT-8 meta, but not because we're going to see hybrids, more so that there are going to be more tamers than normally played in some decks. Crossheart will run a slew of tamers from Taiki Kudo, Akari Hinamoto, and Zenjiro Tsurugi. Blue Flare will utilize tamers like Kiriha and Sora Takanuchi and Joe Kido. Twilight decks will utilize Nene Amano and even BT4 Izzy Azumi for the top deck rearrangement. And sure, I may be highlighting the newest decks, but you'll still also see decks like Metal Guru Rumon X with Davis Motomiya and Cool Boys, Alphamon with Cool Boys Yuji Messiah and Koto Demoto, or even Gaiomon and Black War Greymon decks utilizing Cool Boys, Hiro Manakawas, or in my particular variant, Maki Himakawa. With so much Tamer dependency, Tamer destruction has slowly increased over the last sets. And while Lusamon Chaos Mode and Omnimon's Word Defeat were the earliest ways to delete Tamers, more methods of destruction have been made in the trading card game, along with a few other alternatives. First with destruction, BT-8 offered Black War Greymon as an amazing form of destruction. Here, you were able to delete any number of Tamers up to a play cost of 6, assuming you had a Black Digivolution source underneath. With the upcoming mechanic of Material Save, you'll be able to delete a minimum of 2 Tamers with a play cost of 3 or less. If you're up against Alphamon or Melga X decks, it feels amazing hitting 3 cool boys. Destruction is further supplemented by BT9's introduction of Megadramon. This bad boy just shoots at 3 cost Tamers on Digivolve and with tacking as an inheritable. Unfortunately, these cards are exclusively for black and red. As such, if neither of those colors is really your cup of tea, you'll have to explore these cards as other options. Although briefly before leaving the topic of destruction, I'll delete as another possible card you can use if you really hate children. But that's going to take a lot more setup and memory. Like last week, I covered Argomon and Samadhi Santi. If you're maining green this upcoming format, Argomon from BT5 isn't a bad option to throw into your Bloom Lordmon deck. Because you have Digisorption as possible targets, this gives access to suspending your Digimon for Big Bloom Lord Mon himself to do some real damage. That aside, you're also able to have a suspended body ready for Cherrymon's effect as well. If you don't know what some of these cards do, do head over to my BT10 breakdown playlist for any green cards you may be unfamiliar with. But long story short, Cherrymon's effect allows you to once per turn, switch the attack of one of your opponent's Digimon to one of your suspended Digimon. Who doesn't want to block with Argomon and slap down Tamers so they can't suspend to utilize them in a Digi-Cross? Samadhi Santi can also tap down a Tamer, but only temporarily. And while these two options were touched on last week, another potential option for Tamer hate is Ground Fang. This option card featuring Dino Tigermon costs a whopping 8 memory to play and requires a green color source. Main. Return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon and one of their suspended Tamers to the bottom of their owner's deck. One problem, though. Both targets have to be suspended, and this card costs 8 memory. Unless your opponent's stuff is suspended at activation, some Digimon decks can outright dodge this effect. While black and red cards can delete Tamers, green focuses more on bottom decking or suspending them. But there is one more option out there that can affect Tamers. Startling Thunder is an option card that costs 4 memory, and requires a blue source to play. Main effect, return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to its owner's hand. Then, if you have a Digimon with Jellymon in its name, or with Jellymon in its Digivolution cards, return one of your opponent's Tamers to its owner's hand. Although it doesn't say you trash the sources, when you return a Tamer that has materials saved underneath it, the materials just head straight to the trash. I've also confirmed with Eric Edlund, American Bash, one of the judges for the Digimon trading card game, that this is what happens to materials under a tamer that's bounced or deleted. But while this is an amazing card that can hit any tamer and in essence remove the material saved, this can also be a double-edged sword if you bounce cards like Davis Motomiya, Izzy Azumi, Mako Mochizuki, Analog Youth, and Cool Boy. 
which have on-play effects your opponents can utilize once again. However, do keep in mind that these are inherent strategies if you're trying to force your opponent to trigger mandatory effects. In the case of each of these tamers except Mako, who is a May effect. In the situation of Davis, Analog Youth, and Cool Boys, this could also trick your opponent into decking themselves out. And while I've touched on Aim or Hate, it's time to discuss saving the children. Counters to what your opponent can do to tamers can be very important. Returning to the discussion of Black War Greymon and Megatramon, Megatramon cannot touch 4 cost tamers, meaning memory fixes are typically safe from this Digimon's effect. Sequencing your tamers can also put your opponent in awkward positions if their stacks aren't quite right. For example, having a memory fixer in 2-3 cost tamers can be awkward for your opponent. While your opponent digivolving into Megadramon might scrap one tamer, if they go into Black War Greymon, they now have to choose between popping the 4 cost tamer or the 3 cost tamer as you have a play cost of 7 on board. Although to be fair, in this specific situation, they could just pop the 4 and then swing next turn to take out the 3. But if your opponent is going with the typical Greymon X antibody variant, that doesn't have Mega Dramon, they can just pop the two 3 cost tamers instead. But again, if you only had the 4 and 3, mathematically they can only take out one tamer. Choosing when to play your tamers is going to be another level of strategy. When it comes to saving the children against green, really you can handle the suspension effects by having multiple copies of a specific tamer out. This means that even if one copy is suspended, you can still activate the effects of another. However, when faced against BT5 Argomon, this specific Digimon is also countered by holding onto a copy of a tamer you want to suspend later. But do keep in mind, once suspended, your tamer will not unsuspend in the future while this Digimon remains in play. Lastly, Startling Thunder is useful against Material Save. If your opponent plays this against you game 1, or you even suspect they're running it, spread your save across multiple tamers instead of one, or force them to hit tamers that give you benefits when played again later. What are your thoughts on today's Tactical Tuesday episode? Let me know your thoughts on this particular subject matter, and I'll catch you next time. This is Digipanda, logging out.